Well, millions of Americans use artificial sweeteners to try to control their sugar intake and help them lose weight, but there may now be another reason for concern. There's a new study that finds people who reported drinking two liters or more per week of artificially sweetened beverages, that's the equivalent of a medium-sized fast food diet soda a day, had a 20% higher risk of a specific type of heart issues. So joining us now to discuss is Dr. Laurel Sherian, a neurologist and director of the Comprehensive Stroke Center at Rush Medical Center. Thanks for coming in. Absolutely. These drinks are so common. I think I looked it up and it was like 1.41 million. I mean, it was a ridiculous number. It's very, very common. So let's talk about what specifically, what was studied here and what were the risks? So this is a big study out of the UK, over 200,000 individuals, and looking at soda consumption and artificially sweetened beverages, and they followed them for over 10 years and found that those who were consuming the higher levels of artificially sweetened beverages had almost 20% higher rates of atrial fibrillation than those who didn't. And what's atrial fibrillation? AFib is a arrhythmia of the heart that is a high risk for causing strokes. Okay. So here's what I want to do. You sent me a list, if we can put that up now, of the different types of artificial sweeteners, because we were talking about this and we were curious as to what it includes. Here's some of the most common ones, and I think we have two pages on this. We might, unless this might yeah, be they're everywhere, right? Yeah. So, so here we have these artificial sweeteners that we use all the time. And my question to you is, what came first, the heart issues? or did the sweeteners cause the condition? So it's a great question. So the study like this is really only showing an association. We can't say from this study that it's a clear cause and effect relationship. Mm -hmm. It's just that people who are consuming more of these artificially sweetened beverages are also noted to have higher levels of AFib. Mm -hmm. So I really think the study is gonna prompt some more research into figuring out is it a direct effect of these sweeteners mm -hmm. or is there something else at play? Okay, so my next question is sometimes people don't want just water. So what should they be drinking instead? and you've brought us an example, Yeah, right? I've got a little, okay, so what are we <laughs> little demo for you. So, th so for this, um, you have a lot of options. It's nice because on the market, there's a lot more choices for beverages that um, have some flavor to them, but don't have the artificial sweeteners. So you may see the sparkling waters that mm -hmm. have some flavor added. Um, you may see those that have maybe just a little bit of natural fruit juice in them, enough to give it a little bit of an essence or a flavor. Okay. Um, when I think and then, of that, I'm thinking like bubbly and La Croix, La Croix mm -hmm. right? <laughs> they have those natural flavors of fruit, and there are no artificial sweets. But they're still very low in sugar, maybe 20, 30 calories, but uh -huh. just enough to give it some flavor. And then I also want to point out the difference between just staying hydrated, what you're drinking on a daily basis mm -hmm. to stay hydrated, which plain old water is probably right. best for that, and drinking something that tastes a little bit good, that you're drinking more maybe with a meal. And really the higher volume, the most of what you're drinking really should be just pure water. Okay, so what do we have here then? Because I was thinking, I, I mean, I don't want to name names. So the first thing I thought of was when I saw your packet there was like a crystal light, but that's not what that is because that has artificial that sweetener. Is, well, yeah. Yeah, well, actually what, I'm, what we're saying here with these is if you've got something good and pure, mm -hmm. just like a regular old um, pitcher of water right. and you're going to pour in something like this and it's got these, you know, artificial sweeteners and yeah. artificial colors in them, you're now putting something into your body that really is kind of an additive or an extra right. and you don't need okay. to, right? So instead of doing something like this, mm -hmm. an easier thing to do might be just to flavor the water with maybe some cucumber and mint, um, some berries, and just let it sit in the fridge overnight and, it, and absorb some of that flavor. And then just use that to give it a little bit of flavor instead. And that keeps it all natural and avoids this whole artificial sweetener issue. So bottom line on this then, what do you want our viewers to know? Uh, is this enough to convince us to maybe think twice? I think it should cause a little bit of um, cause for concern. And for me, I think probably trying to avoid this. I also wanna point out that there was a dose dependent relationship. So meaning we really saw this as the amount of consumption went up for these artificial sweeteners. So, you know, we mentioned two liters a day being like more than a can a day kind of a consumption. Um, you know, if you're gonna do this once in a while, it's probably less of a concern. If this is one of the main ways that you stay hydrated and the main thing that you drink, mm -hmm. it may, may be a cause for Concern and maybe time to make some changes. And maybe if you're at risk for heart issues as well, huh? Yeah, okay. you know, there's a lot of other risk factors for atrial fibrillation, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and staying on top of those and also following closely with your doctor if you're having palpitations or things like that. Um, it's a very treatable condition. You can cut your risk of stroke by over 70% wow. by Excellent. getting on the right medicines if you identify that you actually have AFib. So it's always uh, um, good to talk to your doctor about it. Such as well. an important discussion. Thank you so much for coming in and talking about this. Absolutely. We learned a lot here. Okay, Dr. Laurel Sherian, Rush Medical Center, and we'll be right back.